Hey everybody, wanted to spend a little time with you discussing temperature, kind of define it so that you have some uh, idea of what, to do, the, of what it is, and then um, go over maybe some conversions so that we can get ready to use the ideal gas law. So temperature is pretty much how fast the molecules move. When we add heat, this is a really bad balloon, okay? But when we add heat, to molecules, what they do is they start vibrating faster and faster, okay? And as they're vibrating faster and faster, as they're moving faster and faster, that means that they're going to occupy more and more space. And so that's how temperature is related to volume. And so if I have one molecule and, I, and it's going a certain temperature, so that means... And, it's going a certain temperature. It's going a certain speed as measured by temperature. Okay. It's kind of this sphere, you know, it's moving around, you know, doing its thing, and it's kind of moving and doing it. Now if I have increased the temperature, now it's kind of able to move further around, or if I decrease the temperature, now it's only going to move in small paths and so the speed of the molecule is directly related to all these values through the ideal gas law okay and whenever we talk temperature i would definitely mention or i would definitely think speed of the molecule and temperature is universally indicated as capital t and let's be careful that we don't use lowercase t lowercase t is universally accepted as the time and i always put a dingus on my lowercase t's it's called a terminal but i i call it a dingus because it's more fun to say and so um because i don't want it to be confused with a positive or a plus sign okay and then the unit for temperature is kelvin and kelvin is based on the celsius scale but its starting point instead of being um instead of being the, the the freezing point of water at zero celsius and you can go down or up from there the starting point of kelvin is at absolute zero and there's nothing colder than absolute zero if molecular motion is um, temperature there must be a point at which molecules stop moving boom they stop moving boom they fall they don't really fall, but, okay, if they stop moving, that means that the temperature is zero. That's what absolute zero is, okay? So now, in order to convert, we're going to use this conversion factor. Okay, so let's convert some of the following uh, temperatures. Okay, I'm going to pull out my calculator, um, and let's, so if we're going to convert from zero to uh, zero degrees Celsius to Kelvin. Now, this is not like traditional conversions where we use an X line. All we need to do is add 273 to this. And by adding 273, I don't know why I did that, 273, that gives us the temperature in Kelvin. Now, a note on Kelvin, when you write this and read this, you're not going to say degrees Kelvin, okay? This is 273 Kelvin no degree. Okay, so now if we're going to go backwards from Kelvin to degrees Celsius, okay, so 398 minus 273, okay, so 398, oops, if I turn my calculator on, okay, 398 minus 273, okay, that is 125 degrees Celsius. So with degrees with Celsius, I use the degrees with Kelvin, I don't. Okay, so now 42, um, what am I doing? Minus 273. We're going from Kelvin to Celsius. Okay, and so 42, which is super cold. That's only 42 ticks above absolute zero as opposed to here where the freezing point of water is 273 ticks above absolute zero 42 
ticks above absolute zero is super cold. Okay, so 42 minus 273 is going to give us a negative value, which kind of stands to reason. Okay, 231 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is how to convert uh, between Celsius and Kelvin. Uh, and that's going to help us set up for the ideal gas law.